Yeah, thank you, Francesco, for introducing. Uh, yeah, I also hope you will uh, enjoy the session and also, at least to some extent, our talk. So, uh, I will start with a brief introduction to what, what actually motivated our work. Uh, that is the framework for static analysis of uh, the dynamic languages in particle PHP. And the problem, uh, I was actually surprised myself when I, when I learned uh, the details about the web application in particular PHP. So, as you probably know, the web applications are available on the internet for everyone. They provide access to sensitive data uh, when we talk about um, internet banking application or some information system and so on. And so, they are available all the time. So, there is no need for the attacker to hurry and to, they have, uh, they can take their time and then just try to attack the applications and the, the, the servers. Uh, they can access the servers from any uh, basically place on the earth, giving the uh, having the access to the internet, and the applications. Um, but that's probably pretty similar to any other kind of applications. They are vulnerable at many levels. There is the level of the application itself. Then there is some kind of web server uh, running the application. Then there is the operating system uh, using some uh, SSL libraries and and. Um, some kind of network stack and so on. And so there are many levels uh, at which actually the applications or the computers that uh, run the applications can be attacked. And so, so it provides a wide spectrum uh, of, of um, say, uh, options for the attackers to, to uh, turn the, the, the service down. Uh, you probably heard about also the special threats uh, connecting, uh, connected to, to the web applications that are SQL injections or session cookie hijacking, uh, cross-site scripting attacks, and there are many others. I won't just want uh, uh, won't uh, go into the details here. Uh, the common denominator here is they, they all of them uh, they provide a possibility for the attacker uh, to get some access to some sensitive data, and that is something we try to avoid. That was that was our motivation in in, in our mind uh, at the beginning. Uh, What's even worth here that uh, web applications are developed usually using specialized languages like JavaScript, Python, Perl, Ruby, PHP, uh, both at the client and server side. So, uh, the, the, again, the common thing uh, about these languages is that they are usually very easy to use. Uh, they usually do not have any strong type system and uh, everyone, even uh, even those uh, people that don't know anything about security or programming can start developing the applications. And uh, to my surprise, actually, the majority of the application running currently on the internet is writ uh, written in PHP, uh, which is maybe uh, quite surprising for you as well. So, as I already said, uh, the application uh, has the common uh, uh, property that they were very easy to develop uh, application in them, but they are very error prone. The resulting cone is inefficient, and the bad news for us is that they are also hard to analyze uh, due to the uh, properties I just uh, I just uh, sort of said. So, how we help here? Uh, we provide a static analysis framework for for PHP. Uh, even though it's not, uh, I mean, the method it's not tied to PHP. We have to pick up one language because, like, providing a general framework would be much more work and beyond our possibilities. And this framework provides a very easy way for a developer, basically, to define and implement a user static analysis. And we already implemented the Tain static analysis for uh, for PHP applications to detect the, the possible vulnerabilities. Uh, how it looks like so. Uh, on the left hand side, so I did not have a pointer here. Uh, okay. Yeah, so the, whatever, you know what's left. So <laughs> on the left hand side, there is a situation. Uh, there is a situation of the the real situation. So we have a language like PHP with a dynamic cause and includes, meaning that the names of the file names to be included are computed at runtime, so they are statically unknown. Uh, and yeah, it's hard even to, to construct the control flow itself. Uh, they use some complex built-in data structures. They have dynamic type system. Uh, in the case of PHP, you can use a variable that actually keeps an integer and, and assign a string a value to this variable and everything is okay and it's correct according to the semantics. And, and there is also a very, I would say, wild 
uh, set of type conversion uh, during assignments or applying uh, when applying some operations like uh, addition or, or subtraction and so on. So this is something that is very um, like not difficult in particle, but but there are a lot of things that that complicates the analysis, and that is a basically a headache for the developer to to deal with. Uh, so what we do is that we try to address these, uh, and we really do, we address these issues and try to perform the, something that we call first phase analysis that resolves already these uh, issues of the applications of, of the language and provide the user with an API uh, that allows it, him or uh, her to, to develop, uh, a, say, static analysis or, or, or custom analysis uh, and the, developer has the feeling like working with uh, or writing an interprocedural uh, analysis uh, accessing the local variables. So we basically uh, try to take off the burden of the, of the dynamicity of the languages. Uh, yeah, this slide basically summarizes what I just said. Uh, we provide also the default implementation of the control flow computation of the value analysis and the heap analysis, all of these uh, analysis can be replaced by the user-defined and user-implemented analysis. So uh, if someone uh, is not happy with the default implementation of heap analysis, for example, he or she can uh, implement its own either more precise or less precise and more efficient to, to compute uh, the results and, and then implement its uh, own uh, analysis uh, in, the, in the second phase. Uh, we also define a way how to compose these analysis independently and how they can, uh, how these analysis can use uh, at the same time the information from the from the other parts of the of the tool. So just to introduce the the uh, say the architecture of the tool. At the beginning, there is a PHP parser that produces the abstract syntax tree, uh, and there are two phases: first and second phase, or end user analysis phase. Uh, the first phase basically uh, addresses the, the issues and computes the basic information about types, about the, the about the heaps, uh, about the heap and and, uh, and values, and provides information uh, to the user. So yeah, the First, the control flow is uh, constructed, then the shape of the heap is computed, and then uh, we compute also the values, and these values are then again used for like uh, improve or extending the, the control flow because, uh, as I already said, uh, some parts of the, of the code can be uh, included uh, based on runtime uh, computed uh, file names, which is not statically known, so it cannot be uh, cannot be constructed without some kind of uh, uh, value analysis. And then the user analysis uh, computes the, the, the information about the uh, variables uh, upon the user-defined domain. And as I already said, the, the, the user analysis already has the illusion, or the developer has the illusion of, uh, of intra-procedural analysis working with the local, just local variables. Uh, now I, I will Describe the particle parts of the of the tool, so of the gray boxes. If it's yeah, display gray. So first, the, the the value analysis. So in the first phase, uh, the value analysis has to compute possible values for each variable, possible string values, possible integer values, possible boolean values, and also uh, the fact whether the value can be undefined or not. And uh, as I said, that because of the very weak type system of PHP, of course we have to consider all the uh, all the types for all for each variable because it's hard to say, uh, uh, for example, at the beginning whether the variable is of integer type or of a string type because it's just not of any particular type and can be changed later. Uh, we support a native for the native operators and, and all the type conversion and to a great extent also a standard uh, standard library functions. Uh, in some cases, uh, we have just uh, we modeled the library function just by types, that is input types uh, of the uh, of the variables, uh, sorry parameters and output type of the return values. But we also provide an option to uh, to uh, plug in the in model implementation of the standard function to to make it more precise where it is more complex or uh, depending, of course, uh, on, the, of, uh, on the needs of the of the user analysis, because sometimes it's sufficient to model just types, sometimes it's not uh, sufficient and then more precise implementation, including the semantics, uh, has to be provided. 
uh, for the unknown function, of course, because uh, there can appear some, uh, some say standard or library function that is not, um, not supported or uh, not known to our framework, uh, then we uh, return uh, like, uh, or we can assume that the, any value can be returned from the, uh, from the function. So uh, an unknown function is not a, not a, not a big problem. Uh, then the user face analysis uh, can uh, be constructed using arbitrary non relational abstract interpretation domain. Uh, yeah, now to the heap analysis. Uh, the heap analysis approximates the arrays, objects, uh, and array indices, and all the stuff uh, that are stored on the heap uh, with heap identifiers, and it can materialize heap, uh, new heap identifiers, which is important, and I will now show an example uh, why it is important and what is our approach. I hope it's, uh, is this readable, actually? <laughs> okay, so uh, there is a, s a short uh, snippet of three lines of code at the first line. Um, it's not readable for me. Uh, here, <laughs> a small laptop. Uh, so uh, on the first line, there is an assignment of a, of a new instance of object A, of type A, to a statically unknown index of the, of the A array. So the question mark means something that is not statically, uh, statically computed or not available for the static analysis at this particular point. So what we do, or what the analysis uh, here does, is that it creates a new object and assigns, uh, assigns the heap identifier to, to the A, or creates a new heap identifier A unknown or A question mark. Then uh, on the second line, what happens, uh, say again, a, according to an unknown condition, statically unknown condition, uh, to the index variable, uh, one or the value now one or two is assigned, and this value, or this variable, is used on the third line uh, when indexing the A array, and the uh, new instance of uh, the class B is uh, assigned to this, uh, to this index. What, is, uh, what happens here? Uh, or maybe say what, what's the result and then, then why it is the result. So at the third line, the, the heap identifiers A1 and A2 are materialized from the A question mark, and uh, the result is that in A1, there can be uh, the value uh, or heap uh, the object A of type A or the object of type B or uh, undefined or what was there before, uh, for two uh, the same, for the index two the same, and for all the other, uh, for all the other uh, indices, they can be just A or, or, or uh, undefined value. Uh, the point is that, of course, we need to perform weak updates here because we do not, do not know uh, whether the index that was used on the say, second and third lines uh, was one or two. So we have to perform weak updates. Uh, on the other hand, we know that on uh, the unknown indices or all the other but one and two indices, there cannot be stored uh, object of type B because uh, the object of type B is stored just one, uh, at uh, indices of one or two. Uh, a similar uh, example here, but uh, representing, the, representing or illustrating the situation of the if statement is uh, here on the left or right hand side. So we have again an unknown condition and if the condition is true, then uh, to the array, uh, to the index one, a new instance of A is assigned. Otherwise, to the index of, uh, to the unknown index of A, a uh, new instance of B is assigned. And there, uh, this statement represents two branches on the, of the control flow. So at the end, we have, uh, we have to materialize uh, the f index A1 from A question mark to, sorry, uh, question mark to, uh, to, provide a sound and correct uh, representation of this. Uh, of course, uh, what we do is uh, that we use flow sensitive naming scheme, and, and this is just an example. So, so it might be the case that, uh, that uh, someone can actually replace this particle heap analysis with some, uh, with some less precise but better performing, uh, better performing uh, analysis, and yeah, which is possible. So uh, what's our major contribution um, is uh, here is the uh, combination of the heap and value analysis, which are um, 
usually studied independently, and we did it as well, or implemented as well independently. Uh, we have value analysis uh, that uh, actually takes care about local variables, heap analysis that takes care about the heap identifiers here, and unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately with respect to the complexity of the solution, uh, the value analysis uh, and the heap analysis can uh, depend on each other. So. Uh, the values are, uh, can be stored on the heap, which is uh, the, 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 the first uh, box at the bottom. And again, the, so, so the, the, the value analysis uh, has to, uh, or the heap analysis has to use the values. And on the other hand, the values uh, are used by, by the heap as well, uh, which, because heap can access the values, uh, heap accesses can depend on the value information as visible in the second, uh, second example. So we have to define the interplay of these two analyses as well. Uh, this is what I just said, and try to be a little bit faster to just not run out of time. So our, our solution is uh, that the heap analysis provides information about reads, updates, and materialization uh, uh, to the data representation, uh, and the value analysis uh, tracks values on heap identifiers. Uh, we represent all the, all the uh, variables in the, as, a, say, members of, of uh, fields, even the global variables. So uh, basically, there are just heap identifiers uh, for the first phase. And uh, then the data representation uses the information from the heap uh, analysis to update the domains, uh, the value domains, using standard interpretation interface. Uh, and the result is then that the value anal analysis has the illusion of working with just with local variables, which is much simpler than to, uh, than to care about the heap uh, and the, the values on the heap, of course, and uh, COVID aliases and so on. Uh, and as I already said, we can automatically combine arbitrary value analysis uh, domain with our heap analysis domain. So this is also mm, very, very easy to achieve. Uh, get again an example to, to just get a better uh, idea of what's going on. So we have this if statement here uh, where we assign number one to the first index of A or number two to the unknown index. So uh, this V1 and H1 represents the value uh, domain situation after performing the, the first line, the then branch, and the uh, heap domain, uh, and V2 and H2 represents the DLS branch. So what happens first here is that the heap parts are joined. So you can see the result here. Uh, we basically, the join of these two uh, is equal to H1. Uh, because it's uh, bigger than the, the H2. And according to that, uh, because the, the, the array, array one was materialized, so we also have to materialize A1, and uh, the values are initialized from the unknown field. Uh, for the V1, uh, it holds that, yeah, the situation, the value situation looks like this. And because we already merged or joined the, the heap parts of the uh, the heap parts of the uh, yeah, of the data representation, we can now uh, also join the, the value parts, uh, which in our case is just merging the, the available data. Okay, uh, so this is a similar example about assignment, but yeah, can skip that. Uh, about the implementation, if there are questions, of course, please ask. Uh, about the implementation, so we, uh, have implemented the framework and got the, the, the artifact evaluated uh, stamp <laughs> by the committee. So uh, we have uh, a studio implementation. We have a uh, Eclipse plugin that extends or, or improves the development of PHP application by providing uh, the yeah, data analysis results to the user and information about data flow or dangerous data flow from user input to, to databases and, and HTML output. Uh, we also have a web interface of the application where you can paste and you can try it out, paste there your PHP code or application PHP code and, uh, and run it. Uh, yeah, it's not like some uh, great server, so, so just don't expect like miracles <laughs> with the web uh, interface. Uh, but we also have a standalone application, some simple, simple graphical, uh, so simple window application that, uh, that allows to uh, that allows to analyze the stuff. Uh, we also have a command line, yeah, command line version. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, I, I have not put a screenshot of a command line here, of course. Uh, but you can try that. It compiles even on Linux, both on Linux and, and Windows, even though it's written in .NET so, or C Sharp. So uh, yeah, it runs even faster on, on, on Linux, surprisingly. We also, <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, like, yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> uh, so uh, a few words to experiments. We uh, run our tool. Uh, on two, or what I want to present, uh, to do uh, code, two applications, say. One is one my bloggy, which actually is not the original application, but a special benchmark that was based on my bloggy, and then uh, where there, present, uh, there is present on a number of, of, uh, of security, say, vulnerabilities. So the number and also like the kinds is, is known. So we try to, to run our tool on, on, on this benchmark and we were able to discover all the, all the issues that were there. Uh, we also use the Pixie and Phantom tool uh, to, yeah, to, to, to have some comparison. But the, the point is that Phantom uh, is, uh, uh, is focused on, on uh, revealing the type problems in the, in the application. So it's, much, it's, a, it's a small subset of the functionality that, that our tool has. So uh, yeah, the comparison is felt to just some extent. But on the other hand, we just yeah, yeah, narrow, in the comparison, we narrow uh, the group of, of the issues just to those that uh, could be theoretically discovered by, by the type, by the other tools. And there's the Pixie tool that, uh, that is uh, like sli slightly more general than, than Phantom. So it, uh, it is able to, to also find some taint problems. Uh, so this was error coverage with false positive rate. Uh, of course, this is something that, uh, yeah, the, this is something that, that uh, requires uh, really uh, to go through all the found errors and, 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 and uh, decide. Uh, we also use the other, uh, another application called NOC, which is a web client. You can see the size in the slide uh, where we have uh, these numbers. And Pixie and Phantom like, did not complete the, the, the analysis, so the results are not available. These are information on scalability, and we were able uh, to find in the NOC uh, web client application, we were able to find uh, 13 uh, bugs that were previously unknown, uh, and out of them, three of them were uh, real vulner vulnerabilities and security issues of the application. So yeah, that, that was something real, I would say. <laughs> Even though the application is not that uh, large, it's just 15 kilologs, uh, still it already does something and it's used. So uh, this is my last slide. So now our future work is, of course, to enhance scalability because so far we are very limited to uh, in the sense of memory. So yeah, we can run out of memory quite quickly. Uh, we also want to enhance precision in the sense of, of um, uh, like cutting the, 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 the false positives down. And also, uh, you know, by means of better string analysis and modeling built-in functions and, and path insensitivity. And also try to uh, some unsound analysis, uh, which would allow us to discover uh, maybe more uh, interesting issues uh, within less time, of course, at the price of, of, of the unsoundness of the analysis. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening. <laughs> of course, I'm ready for questions. <laughs> uh, I have to switch this off. And, uh, thank you. You were perfect in time. Very happy <laughs> for the first one, so we don't have to take really? So I have to scream because uh, I can finish it on. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, uh, actually I have plenty of questions, but let's start. So the first one is uh, uh, you're doing taint analysis, so you have a framework and then you do taint analysis. Uh, yeah, maybe I was not, not, not uh, yeah, uh, precise enough. The framework uh, does not do the taint analysis. The framework uh, has a first fit analysis which computes the basic information like the, about the types, about the values of the variables, and try to solve the, the, the dynamic issues that includes and so on. And then we say as a proof of the concept, we have a taint uh, analysis implemented there. So that was the, the, that were the evaluation, that were the results, of course. So the number you show us uh, are the number about? Yeah, about taint, taint analysis. Taint, taint, yeah, yeah, yeah. Taint errors that arrive, some problems. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So uh, you gave a, uh, I used my, I'm the chair so I can. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, my other question was that you give us the percentage, so there was false positive ratio of 62%. Oh, um, bad. Okay. Yes. So, but uh, how many are they? How many false warnings uh, a product security guy has to go and see? Ah, uh, yeah. Five, in the case of yeah, the, the numbers, the, the 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 exact numbers are, I think, in the in the paper, right? I'm not sure, but but uh, so, but but I think it was around 80 uh, okay, in this sorry. case. Uh, no, something like like tens okay, of so, them. So it's something that uh, human. Uh, it's doable. Yeah, it's it's doable. It's doable. I mean, the point is that. Um, the, if you see the error and you check the uh, check the code, uh, for some errors it can take really hours to, to decide whether it's false positives or not. Because uh, what I have I tried recently to run it uh, the run our framework on, on WordPress, and the issue was that I got a really uh, plenty of uh, errors uh, f because of wrong number of parameters of some standard function. I think that the, 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 it was a correct uh, report to me. Uh, but yeah, the, if, 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 I, if I gave this to, to a guy just being into WordPress, he said, okay, there's a false alarm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not a security issue, of course. Uh, we also like not, uh, we are not reporting just the taint errors or this, but, but also the type errors because they need to be computed anyway. So we, next to that, we, we report also other kinds of errors. Uh, so yeah, so he, he said, okay, I didn't find any real error in the, in the report and they were like, I think about 100 as well. So, but it was just a part of the of the WordPress. Yeah. So. Still, is something that a human being can see. So, it yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, they are not in the huge number. Okay, I know I'm the program chair. I can do whatever I want, but I take question from the audience. <laughs> Frank. Yeah, does your framework deal with uh, the nastier features of PHP, like variable functions and variable variables? Where you yeah, <laughs> that's uh, th that's part of the of the first analysis phase that we try to, to cope. I mean, uh, in principle, I don't know about anything that we wouldn't deal with. So yeah, um, honestly, I, I'm not sure I, I mentioned that, but but the the parser. Uh, the PHP parser we use is from the Fallinger project, so it was not our work, and it already does a lot of things, like it tries to compute something already. So what we got is already partially solved. N not, not, not everything, because it's a compiler, so they, what they can't compute easily, they just move to runtime. I mean, even the inclusion. So <laughs> they're, it's quite uh, like easy work for them just to solve the easy stuff and, and postpone the, the, the hard stuff to runtime, which we cannot do. I mean, we can do that, but then we wouldn't find anything. So, so nevertheless, we have to compute something still. So yeah, and, and yeah, we cope with variable variables, we go with ML and, and this kind of stuff. So try to be practically usable. <laughs> okay, we have either time for a very, very quick question or we got to move to a next speaker, so to stay in time, so okay. Thank you. Thank you.